So do you think that using uh, the school programs is and doing like small group projects and team building is a better way to find people that you're willing to work with in the long term or do you think it's better to work with you know short bursts of people that you find on the internet that are clearly qualified but you may not know as well? So I think the big advantage of um, working with these people at school is that first of all they're not asking for money which is uh, I think a big part uh, also of the recent uh, game development things uh, in my life at least um, and also everyone has time and everyone is assigned to work with someone so you everyone kind of agrees on doing this within the team and that creates this strange atmosphere which yeah in which you can really get to know other people um, everyone is kind of, in, to a certain extent, committed to, to make something of the project. So, yeah, that, I think that's definitely the best way to see whether people are qualified or you know, how they work in a team. Or, it's just that I, I don't see a way of applying that, for instance, into uh, a more corporate or a more uh, business way of finding people. I mean, you can just ask someone to do a project with you for free just to see whether they will qualify for your next. It, unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. So do you um, just stay with the people that are within the collective or do you bring people outside um, to work on some of your projects? Outside as well. I mean, of course, there's lots of resources inside this game garden, but um, yeah, there's still a lot of creativity outside that you just cannot ignore. We're looking for interns, for instance, that are not inside the Dutch game garden. Um, they're mostly on universities and schools uh, around uh, every part, every part of Holland. Um, and then there's still always the people you've been working with from the start, uh, which are also not not always inside the Dutch game garden. So, yeah, there's still lots of creativity, and we're not really bound to anything inside the Dutch game garden. So, do you have a when you bring on people like maybe creative people if you have? Um, Artists or musicians, do you have a like a screening process that you go through before you allow them onto your team? Like, is there anything in particular you look for? Well, it would be the easy answer to say creativity or something like that. Um, but I think what's most important is that they that their portfolio really shows that they they're capable first of all, uh, and second of all that they also understand the way we make games. Um, the way I make games is really from this strange vision perspective that I give someone like the few words intimate, sweaty, nasty, awkward, and then I really hope the artist will come back to me and say, okay, look, 70s porn is your way to go. And so that's really a strange way of working maybe. It's also a very, very difficult way of working. So that's also one, one thing uh, I really look at when, when looking for freelancers. Yes, definitely. Do you have them, um, people who aren't part of your regular team, do you have them sign any agreements or do you have, um, yeah, set agreements for how things are going to work between you or? Yeah, so right now we are basically using agreements uh, I got from friends, uh, friend game developers. Um, obviously those things are like so expensive, especially in, the, in Holland. If you want a template for like a freelance project, it will cost you something between a thousand and fifteen hundred euros, which is like almost as much as you would pay a uh, freelance work for a month. So obviously that's just ridiculous. Um, so yeah, we do have agreements, but yeah, I think right now we're just gonna be making our own or trying to construct our own agreements. Actually, now that I think of it, we are probably gonna hire a. Um, person in Macedonia uh, to make contract for us, which is like, I don't know, a hundred euros or so. So that's a lot less money and it's probably going to be just as good as, as the one we could get in Holland for 1,500 euros. So, yeah. What are your opinions about um, having like a group of people that you trust to, to bounce ideas off of, not just for creative, but for you know talking to other experienced developers that may know about you know what kind of deals to avoid, how to not get taken advantage of, how to how to not invest in like fools errands of games that you can't really recoup your money on? I mean, do you have that sort of kind of a? I have a few of those groups. Um, one is definitely the business people. Um, so the building of Dutch Game Garden has has a few of those. Um, then, of course, there's my, my parents who give me lots of advice. Um, 
Um, so they, they really try to stop me from making the strange deals. And then there's, of course, the whole creative part, which is actually far, far more difficult to find the right people in because you need, a, a like, you need people that are like-minded, um, that, that can also see the bigger picture of the things you want to develop. Um, and then again, you need another group of people that is just you know, super critical and uh, yeah, being so hard on you and telling you that your games suck because that those people they really force you to yeah giving you some actual feedback rather than just saying pat you yeah. on the head and say that's good yeah yeah and that's one of the reasons I make my prototypes because then I can have strange uh, boring people test them and then they will tell me what's wrong about it and that will give me feedback of what I have to work on later.